everyone. Welcome back to the Jaden Stitches Show and our Victorian parlor. We have arrived in August, so it's time for the next stitch in our 2018 calendar blanket, a Victorian stitch sampler. This month we're going to learn X's and O's. The Victorians were positively mad about parlor games, so this month's stitch is a nod to all those evenings spent around the table playing games with friends and family. The stitch itself is fairly straightforward. Every second tall stitch crosses back behind the first, and that creates the X. The spaces in between create the O's, and the overall pattern has this beautiful, twisting, textured trellis look that is a lot warmer than you might think. This pattern stitch can be worked over any foundation chain row that's a multiple of three. And like all of our stitch guides, you'll find this one for sale in our Etsy shop. We'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below, and you'll also find some pattern notes there as well. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, fold up our big blanket, and take everything over to the craft table, and we will stitch up X's and O's together. To add X's and O's to our 2018 calendar blanket, you're going to want a small amount of your divider color in order to work your divider row, and about 100 grams of color for your actual stitch. Remember, it should still be the same size and weight yarn that you've made the rest of your blanket out of. I'm using 100% acrylic, size 4, medium worsted weight yarn. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, same hook size that we've been using all along, which is a 5.5 millimeter or an I9 also known as a size 5 in the UK. Make sure you've got your blanket, and once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. First, we're going to add our little divider row. So you're going to take your divider color and make a slip knot. And we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch to the top of the last stitch from our old country bridges pattern. Join with a slip stitch to the very top of it. We're going to chain three, and this chain three will count as a double crochet. And remember, we want to get back to 120 stitches. So our divider row will be 120 stitches at the end. That will include this chain three. You should have 20 big spaces, so 20 big spaces from your old country bridges stitch. Into the first space, we're going to work five double crochet. So you should have a chain three to begin, and five double crochet all worked into that first big space. You're going to skip over that little space and into the next big space, and you're going to work six double crochet into that big space. You're going to skip all the little spaces and just focus on the 20 big spaces that you've got. You're going to work six double crochet into each of the big spaces all the way across until you get to the very last one, and I will catch up with you there. you should have six double crochet in every single one of those 20 big spaces and you're just skipping the little spaces in between. So six double crochet in the big space, skip the little space, six double crochet in the big space. You get all the way across to the last big space and it's this sort of floppy thing here on the end. We're going to work five double crochet into this space And once you have five double crochet, you're going to count up three chains. So one, two, three, and into that third chain, the top of that third chain, you're just going to work your last double crochet. Count them up, including the chain three at the beginning of this row. You should have 120 stitches in a very pleasing little pattern that looks like that. Time to fasten off, grab your scissors, Snip your yarn, make sure you have enough tail that you can weave it in. You might want to take a moment, grab your yarn needle, flip your blanket over, and just weave your tail back and forth underneath those stitches right there. 
make sure you've flipped your blanket over so you're looking at the back side of the divider row you just worked. We're going to make a slip knot now using the pattern stitch color. I'm back to this lovely little green. Make a slip knot, put it on your hook. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in the top of that last double crochet that we made in our divider row. There we go. Join with a slip stitch and chain three. Every single row in the X's and O's pattern begins with a chain three. And we're not really going to count it as anything, so don't worry about it once you've made it. <laughs> we're going to jump right into our X stitch, and we're using the treble crochet stitch. And I know I just heard a couple of you groan, don't worry, this is not as tricky as you think it's going to be. The first X in the row might be the most annoying or fiddly to make, so if you can get past this first X, the rest of it will not be a problem. We work over sets of three stitches, and in this case we're going to include the first stitch at the end of the row that we've already joined our yarn and chained three out of, so this stitch we're not finished with yet. We're going to count one, two, three, find the third stitch in, and we're going to treble crochet into it. So remember, a treble is two wraps around your hook, you're going to pick up a loop in that first stitch. That gives you four loops on your hook. Wrap, back through two, wrap, back through two, wrap, back through two. And you can see the nice angled treble crochet we just made. That's half of an X. We're going to chain one because we need a little bit of space between the trebles in the actual X stitch. So every time you work that first treble, so the one that runs on a diagonal three stitches away, you always chain one afterwards. All right, we're not done yet. We need to go back to this first stitch that we have worked into. So that's the first stitch of the set of three because every single X is worked across a set of three stitches. In this case, because we had to join our yarn and start the row, we've already used this stitch. That's why this first X might be a little bit funny. We're going to begin with our treble, so wrap your yarn. You want to pull that first treble out of the way, so pull it towards you, maybe hold it down with your other thumb. You want to free up that stitch. It's easy to see here because we've already worked into it. So make sure you've got your two wraps around your hook. Pick up a loop in that first stitch. We don't want to cross our yarn over that treble that we made, so that's why we're holding it forward towards ourselves. And then just complete your treble. Like I said, this first X is a little bit messy, a little hard to work, a little fiddly, so don't worry if it's giving you a bit of trouble, because the rest of them are easier. Okay, that's the first one out of the way. Before we take a look at our work, we're going to work a couple more Xs. Identify the next three stitches. They're unworked. Here they are. One, two, three, just waiting for us to do something. Skip the first two, find the third, and treble crochet into it. So there's that treble, remember, that's the one that nice long lean, it's the first half of the X. Make sure you chain one immediately after that first treble. We need that little space. Pull it forward, hold it down with your thumb if you have to, and that frees up the previous two stitches. You can see them pretty clearly. Here's the one we worked, and here's the middle. This is the stitch we want to use. So we wrap twice around our hook. Make sure we're not crossing over that stitch we made. Pick up a loop in that first of the skipped stitches and treble crochet. Now, let's pull this apart a little bit. You can start to see the X's forming. So the trebles make an X and the spaces in between make the O's. Let's do another one. Identify the next three stitches. There they are, one, two, three. Skip the first two, find the third, treble crochet into it. This is your lovely long leaning treble. It's the first half of your X, so make sure you chain one, because your X's need a little space in between. Set up for your next treble. There is your first skipped stitch. You might want to pull that first treble back, get it out of your way so you can identify your two stitches. And you want to treble crochet into that first skipped stitch. Oops. 
complete that treble. And there we go. And see what's happening? Because we're not crossing our yarn over top of that first treble we make in the X, you can easily pull them apart. So there's no, nothing's holding them together. And this beautiful twisted stitch can be used in a lot of different patterns, but it's important that they don't get sort of attached together because it creates a gorgeous three-dimensional effect. And you'll see that a few more rows in. But you can definitely see the X's being made and the O's in between. All right, one more together. We're going to find the next three stitches, there they are, skip the first two, treble crochet into the third stitch. After you've worked that treble, make sure you chain one, pull it towards you, right, so you can sort of see those first two skipped stitches, find the first one. If you have to re-wrap your yarn, wrap your yarn twice and you want to treble crochet into that first stitch. We're not connecting our trebles, they're just twisting around each other in a lovely little X pattern. And that's all you've got to do. You just identify the next three. Remember the X is worked over three stitches. Skip the first two to work your first treble into the third stitch. After you've worked that treble, don't forget to chain one because you need that space. Pull it forward, get it out of the way. You want to look at those first two skipped stitches. Find the skipped stitch that was number one. Treble crochet into it, and off you go. You want to work that X stitch all the way across, across every single set of three. It should work out perfectly, and I will see you at the end of this row. All right, you should have something that looks like this all the way across. Almost a bit of a braid, but it's an X. So we've got these lovely little X stitches and O's. And don't worry, after a few rows, you'll really start to see the X's because they're going to be pulled apart with the successive rows. But you should have roughly 39 so far. We're going to work our 40th X over the last three stitches. So once you've worked your last X, which is the two crossed treble crochets, this is how we work the last X in every single row of this pattern. Identify your last three stitches. The top of the third will be a chain three. So it's stitch, stitch, chain three. You want to treble crochet into the top of that chain three. So treble crochet, it's the first half of your X. Make sure you chain one. You're gonna cross back behind to work your second treble, so bring it forward, find that first of the skipped stitches, cross back behind that treble crochet, and we're going to treble crochet only a part of it. So you're going to leave the last two stitches on your hook. Then you're going to set yourself up for another treble, so we're finishing the row with a treble crochet two stitches together. You're going to work the last treble into the same stitch that you worked your first treble into. So identify the top of that chain three, you've already got a stitch in it. Work the, the, the first half of the second treble, that should leave you with three loops on your hook. Wrap, pull back through all three. You've completed your last X and a post, so the last three stitches is a treble, a chain one, and a treble crochet two stitches together. Because we don't really want our post stitches to count. We want our stitches to be pretty much all X's all the way across. So by treble crocheting the two stitches together at the end, what that does is just keep your stitch count nice and even. You should still have 120 stitches all the way across, or 40 X's if you want to count it quickly. And remember that chain three that we began the row with? Well, it's technically part of our treble crochet two together that we started with. So when we get all the way back across to finish row two, you'll just be working into the top of that actual treble. You'll be completely ignoring the chain three, but I'll show you that when we get there. So that is row one. Every row is absolutely identical, which makes the stitch a little easier on your brain. All you have to do is think about creating trebles and crossing back behind the first treble in order to make these lovely little X's. And the O's just create themselves. We chain three to begin, because every single row starts with a chain three. Turn our big blanket around. All right, we flipped our blanket. We have a chain three to begin the row. The chain three is technically part of the first treble crochet two together, but we're just sort of going to ignore it. 
we're aiming for the third stitch in. So here's stitch one, stitch two, stitch three. Stitch two is the chain between trebles, and stitch three should be pretty easy to see. It should look kind of pulled and open like that. That's the stitch we're aiming for. We're going to treble crochet into the third stitch, the top of the third stitch. That's the first half of our X. Remember to chain one because we need a chain space in between our X trebles. We got to pass our hook back behind, so we're going to reach back behind, pull it forward if we have to, treble crochet into that first stitch that the chain three comes out of. And that's the first X made of row two. And it looks something like that. Again, not super easy to see, a little bit tricky, the first X, but everything else is easy from there. So identify the next three stitches. It should really be the top of the next X. So here's one, two, three. The next stitch you're aiming for should be a little on the open side. You want to triple crochet into the top of that third stitch. Chain one and then reach back, pull that stitch forward, reach back and treble crochet into the top of the first skipped stitch of that set of three. Incidentally, both of your treble crochets will be anchored in the top of the treble crochets from the row before. There is no chaining in between X's. You don't have to chain in between your X's. The only chain you want is between the two trebles that make one single X stitch. And that's all. It's the same thing all the way across. Identify the next three stitches. One, two, three. Treble crochet into the third stitch. Once you have that stitch made, the nice diagonal one, chain one and treble crochet by reaching back behind that first one and treble crocheting into the first skipped stitch of that little set. Takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to the the little strength, uh, the different little strength and tension on your fingers of pulling a stitch forward and reaching back around, it zips up pretty quickly. Take your time. It's a bit of a long stitch. I know trebles can give some people a little bit of trouble, so take your time. Relax. There's no rush. And you're just going to work that lovely little X stitch all the way across, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row two. Okay. Every single X in row two should be sitting directly above an X in row one. So up to this point, you're going to have 40 X's in every single row. So that's not going to change. And I'm, I've got one X left to make in row two. That's where I'm going to pick up <laughs> with you guys. But that's what it should look like so far. So all of your twisted trebles, your X's, should be sitting up on top of the one from the row before. It should look nice and even just like that. So let's catch back up at the end of the row here. I'm at the end of row two. And remember I told you about that chain three that we begin every row with and that it kind of doesn't count? Well, it really doesn't. When you want to look for the last three stitches to work your last X, you're going to look for the literal last three stitches. So there's the treble, there's a chain one, there's a treble. These chain threes we're just going to ignore. We're only going to focus on the top of that real stitch. So our second last treble crochet gets worked right into the top of that last stitch, ignoring the chain three. Chain one, and then cross back behind, find that first skipped stitch, work your last treble crochet, but only the first two thirds of it. Leave two loops on your hook, set yourself up for a final treble crochet, so the post treble crochet. Remember we're working a treble crochet two together here. So into the same stitch that you worked your second last treble crochet into. Work the first two thirds of that second treble. That'll leave you with three loops on your hook. Wrap, pull back through all three. That's a treble, treble crochet two stitches together. <laughs> and so you've worked two trebles into one. So that's just one stitch across the top of those two trebles. That completes your last X and your post. And that is the stitch you're going to start with for row three. So that's what it should look like so far. It's really pretty. 
chain three and turn your work. That's how every row begins. We're in the beginning of row three now and this should look pretty familiar. So you want to work every single X on top of the X from the row previous. The chain three at the beginning of the row counts as half of a treble crochet two stitches together. You find those first three stitches. The first stitch you're aiming for should be pretty obvious because it's a little bit on the open side. Treble crochet directly into it. Remember to chain one in between the trebles of an X and then reach back behind to the first stitch that you skipped, which is technically what the chain three comes out of. And that's the first X of row three. The next three stitches, one, two, three, should be the top of the next X. It always looks like you're reaching over a little bit, so don't be, you know, thrown off by that. Treble crochet, chain one, treble crochet, reach back behind to the first skipped stitch, and treble crochet into it. Like I said, take your time, there's no rush, and all you're doing is working twisted trebles or X's all the way across. And that's all you're going to do for rows one, two, three, all the way up to row seven. We're only working seven rows of this stitch because it's a little taller than some of the other ones we've done, and we don't need it to be that big. So you're going to work seven rows in total of the X's and O's stitch. You want every single X to sit directly on top of the X's from the previous row. Take your time. You don't want any of your stitches sort of attached together. They should be able to sit open. If you pulled apart those trebles, you should be able to pull them right apart. It's going to look a little bit like a twisted trellis. And that's all you're going to do. Remember, when you get to the end of every single row, you're going to ignore the chain three. The last stitches you're going to concentrate on are the actual stitches, so the stitches that make up the X. You're going to work your cross treble into the real stitch at the end, ignoring the chain three. Chain one, cross back behind and work the first two thirds of a treble into the top of this. Start another treble and work it into the very end stitch there. You're working two trebles together and they're going to anchor here and here. But you know what? I'm going to show you that one more time when we get there. So just work your X stitch all the way across. I'll catch up with you at the end of row three and then I'm going to turn you loose. All right, I'm nearing the end of the third row now. I just love this stitch. There's my little X's, there's my O's. This really cool twisted 3D wonderful texture happening. And I wanted to show you that last finish. So every row ends this way. You come up on the end and you've got that chain three from the beginning of the previous row. You're gonna skip that, just ignore it. You wanna look at the actual three stitches that make up the X. And here we go. We're going to treble crochet into the real stitch. So we'll skip two, find that third stitch, ignore the chain three at the very end there. Treble crochet into it, nice full complete treble crochet. There we go. And then we're going to reach back so there's that reaching back into that first skip stitch. We're going to work the first two-thirds of that treble then we're going to look back to where we worked our first treble, that's at that very end, because we're working a treble crochet two stitches together. We set ourselves up for the other treble, work it into the top of that stitch, work the first two thirds of that second treble, that leaves you with three loops on your hook, wrap, pull through everything, and that is the last X and the post made to finish the row. Every row ends with that. Every row begins with a chain three, and every single X is worked across the top of the X from the previous row, and every X should be three stitches. There's a treble, a chain one, a treble. And you end up with this lovely twisted effect. It is so neat. All right, go ahead, work four more rows of this lovely X's and O's stitch. You'll be really uh, <laughs> mastering the treble crochet by that point. <laughs> Remember to take your time, take a break if you have to, grab yourself a little bit of water, go for a walk, anything you need to do, keep those fingers limber, and I'll see you at the end of row seven. 
Alright, I'm just getting to the end of my seventh and final row of the X's and O stitch, and I thought I'd show you the end stitch one last time. So I've reached the last X. I'm going to work my last X directly on top of it. So that's a treble crochet into the top of the last actual stitch. So remember, we just ignore that chain three. So it's a little easier. You just grab that last stitch, treble crochet into it, chain one. And we're going to skip back one, two. There's that skipped stitch. We're going to start a treble crochet in that. Leave the last two loops on the hook. And then we're going to start another treble crochet into the same stitch that we worked the first treble of this X. And then you've left with three loops on your hook instead of just two. Wrap pull through everything. That's a treble crochet two together. And that makes your last X and the post that finishes off the row. And that is it. Seven rows of the X's and O's stitch. It looks like a sort of a spinning climbing trellis of sorts. I just love this texture. It is so cool. Really, really pretty. Kind of on the warm side, so it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that it's not going to be a cozy thing to pull around your shoulders if you're going to try and make yourself a wrap or something out of it. But that is it for that stitch. We can snip our yarn, fasten off, weave in our tails. If you're going to do some measurements, your final stitch width and height, so it's going to be approximately 5 inches or 13 centimeters tall, that's that block, and from side to side you're still the same uh, width, give or take a little bit, as the rest of your blanket. So 40 inches or 100 centimeters. And remember, all of these stitch patterns work a little differently. So some of them might want to tighten up, some of them are going to be really loose. It doesn't matter because we're going to put a border on at the very end and block it and your entire blanket will move more or less together as one. Remember, it's a stitch sampler. Gosh, look at all these stitches we've done. Wow! <laughs> That is the eighth stitch in our 2018 calendar blanket. It's hard to believe we're into number eight already. That means we have four more to go and the blanket is really shaping up beautifully. I hope you had fun making this along with me this month and we will see you soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everybody. Bye!